Some of the hottest toys with tech. Welcome back to Textination. I'm Fred Fishkin. With us from the Toy Insider is contributing editor Charlene Deloach. Hi, Charlene. Hello. Great to see you. And we have some midsummer fun to talk about. And we should point out that uh, toys with tech don't always mean screens, right? Absolutely. Yes. And I think one of the bigger things, too, is that tech doesn't necessarily have to be a distraction. It can actually be a tool for education and learning, too. Terrific. Well, let's start out on the furry side, uh, just out for real peanut. It's a, a playful monkey from Just Play. Tell us about it. Yeah. So obviously for real, the brand has been around for, for like over 20 years, but the technology just keeps improving with every animal that they have, you know, coming out. And the latest one is actually another big toy trend with uh, monkeys <laughs> and sort of, sort of the safari theme. And yes, Just Play's newest version is super fun and is really taking the uh, toy world and the kid world by storm. And that is just out. It sells for what, about $60? Yes, exactly. And, you know, obviously as we get into the holiday season, always take a look at those deals that might be out there too. There's a new Furby. There's a familiar name, the Furby Galaxy. Tell me about this. Yeah, so Furby relaunched, if you will. I always feel like it never de-launched, but, you know, Furby relaunched really last year. And this one is the newest version of it, which has a glow-in-the-dark feature as well, which kind of makes it a little bit more, more fun and be able to do things, you know, at nighttime or if you decide to create, like, a little play for it at home, that sort of thing. And then for, like, the adults who really love it, I mean, it just looks really, really cool. And the adults will get uh, the name here, the Aurora Furbialis, I think it's called. <laughs> exactly right. Got to love when the uh, toy manufacturers come up with clever names. And that's about $60 too. Another familiar name, Tamagotchi. They're, they're going on and on, aren't they? Right. But I think what we're sort of seeing with Tamagotchis is exactly your point, right? They've been around for a long time, but now they're revamping them to go back to the classics that you and I remember, right? So that kind of fun, nostalgic, pixelated, you know, look, the ability to, in this one with the connection that you can then go into different, you know, worlds and, and jump from, you know, Tamagotchi to Tamagotchi. So it's really fun to sort of see this classic uh, that has a lot of different iterations over its lifetime kind of go back to that nostalgic version that, you know, we kind of know and love. And then we can bring to our kids and say, hey, this is what it was like when we played with it as a kid. But now. The nostalgia seems to be a theme. And I suppose it's to be familiar to the parents so that they're going to buy it because you've got a new light bright. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. And um, I don't know about you, but like light bright was one of the most toys that we played with as uh, my brothers and I in our own family. But now, you know, you don't have the bulb in the back or have to, you know, be attached to the electricity in the wall. It's all sort of battery operated. It's LED. It's even better and brighter than before. But when they bring back like the version of Hello Kitty, it's sort of taking this nostalgic character that came out in the 70s and really became popular in the United States, you know, in the 80s, along with light bright and combining it with that modern aesthetic that the kids are kind of looking for so to your point i think it's that nostalgia not only so the parents will go on and buy it but really kind of bridging that generational play gap where maybe parents will now want to play with their kids as well because it's something that they know and from are familiar with and yet another familiar name luigi back back once again and this one does require a screen the switch right Yes, it does. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, again, it was a popular game, you know, a couple decades ago when it was uh, the Nintendo, you know, DS system there. And now it has, you know, improved graphics and sort of bringing that play back. So where parents can be like, oh, I remember playing this game as a kid myself. And now we'll sort of feel like they can sit down and pick up kind of where they left off with their kids and, and get to introduce this really fun classic. And it's Luigi's Mansion 2D, 2, 2 yeah, HD, right. right? Okay. Yes. 
Yeah. Toy Monster has a, a brand new one just out again. Uh, Jurassic Captives Epic Battles Rumble Cave. That's a <laughs> Right, it is. But um, I kind of consider this like a future tech, right? In other words, it's something that we haven't seen before in the tech space. It's this idea of that unboxing, right? That's been really popular over the past couple of years where all of a sudden, you know, you go through different um, things and activities to do to finally, you know, get to that toy inside. And this one sort of combines that tech where now this, you know, page is shaking, it's rumbling and there's lights and sort of reminds you of that Jurassic Park feel, right? When they would go to the cage and, and they'd be like, what's inside? And it would make it being all, all these noises and the like. So now kids get to kind of take what's off the screen and have that play pattern at home in a really unique tech way that, that we haven't seen before. Terrific. Well, there's another digital pet to talk about. Uh, Tamagotchi's got company. This one's from Spin Master. Tell me about it. Yeah, so this idea of um, taking that virtual world pet, right, but having that uh, interaction with it, human interaction with it, with your finger. So basically, you can um, use your finger to actually like pet your virtual pet, right? And it sort of reacts through different sensors and things like that to your touch. So it's combining this virtual tech space with that, you know, hands-on experience as well. It's kind of an interesting new take that I'm seeing also in the tech space where it's like, how do you take this, uh, you know, non-tangible thing and add a tangible element to it? And what is this one called? Peroons. Yep. Peroons. Okay. Skyrocket has one just out, uh, an AI story bear. What, what is this? Right. So do you remember like the stories uh, where you could like read a chapter and at the end of it, you get to decide if your character is going to go to the forest or go to the lake, right? And or who you're going to interact with. It's taking that idea and now using that AI technology to tell a story. And I really like about this one is that, you know, the kids have a screen, this is screen based but they get to pick like which character they want, three other characters, where they're gonna go and um, play, you know, the Poe, the story bearer gets to create and tell the story that the kids came up with with their imagination. And I love that it's called Poe. Most kids won't have any idea who Poe was, but anyway. So this is from a company called, is it pronounced play, P-L-A-I? Yeah, exactly. It's a fun uh, take on the name play. Exactly. Yep. But using play with AI and yeah, it's kind of fun. Coming up next month, there's a there's a toy called Magmoji, I think. It's a phone accessory. Yeah, it's sort of fun. It's taking, you know, obviously we're all walking around <laughs> with like some version of a phone, right? So why not take a toy element and make your phone a little bit more fun. So yes, it's coming out, um, I believe Verizon in particular, but yeah, it's sort of having this like fun plush, you know, uh, there's like an avocado plush, if you will, that you can use as your phone case. And, you know, it's kind of fun. And I especially think like for parents in particular, you can get one of these, it's kind of fun, it's nostalgic, but then, you know, you can use it almost like as a puppet for a little kid and be like, you know, have the little avocado dance or something like that too. So lots of fun uh, you know, options, play, collectability that I think this one will be really interesting for the fall. Terrific. And and finally, from RoboSen, uh, is this really for kids? $1,200 Transformers flagship Megatron auto converting robot. Wow. Well, I don't think it's yet right. And they have some, uh, they have different versions. There's three out right now. I think the lowest price point for one of them is is $700. So this is definitely not an inexpensive buy, but I think the idea is it's something for parents and kids to like purchase together and play with together. And so in this particular instance though, uh, adults are gonna love it because it has the voices from the original characters of the Transformers movie, the original Transformers movie, combined with the tech is just, you know, it has, it has to see it to believe it kind of thing. It's so amazing in terms of I think there's like over 115 chips and, you know, the articulation and the app and voice, voice command is just spectacular. 
but it's this idea of maybe the adults are the ones to sort of purchase it for them, but now they can sort of bring in the kids to sort of say like, hey, let's play with this together. Just terrific. But for 1200, I think I'd want it to do the floor or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> But as you think about it, though, even things like Legos, right, which don't necessarily have a tech element, those price points are getting, you know, higher and higher, too, in the collectability as well. So, but one of the reasons why this is definitely at a higher price point, I believe there's only a certain number made as well. So uh, it definitely has that uh, collectability factor. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the Legos. They're, they're getting so intricate, some of them, the amazing, amazing kits that they have out there today. Absolutely. So for more info on, on all these and to follow the, the work there, where should people go? Yeah, so head to thetoyinsider.com. Not only can you, like you said, learn more about these price points, where to purchase, but you can also search for other tech toys by age range and interests and uh, you know be able to sort of find what's going to work for you and your family. That's thetoyinsider.com. Charlene Deloach, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you so much.